hi guys. <laughs> Today we are doing a little get ready with me using the Mercury Retrograde palette and just talking about like what we want to see in 2020, like some goals, whatever, things we want to see in the new decade, a little bit personal goals, a little bit of like what we want to see on a whole from society, the beauty community, whatever. I get real rambly. It may not make any sense whatsoever. And no telling I'm going to edit it out. I don't know. Anyways, I did this look and I'm getting ready to film another video. That's why I did this one. I was like, get two birds stoned at once, right? So here we are. Anyway, <laughs> watch me do my makeup and listen to me ramble. Go ahead and just keep on watching. But before you do, go ahead, like, and subscribe and comment down below some things you want to see in the new decade. And without further ado, let's get into this rambly look. Today, I thought we would just, uh, I gotta get ready to film another video, or review video. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to look in the old journal here at some of the things I wrote down that maybe like goals for 2020 or the new decade and just kind of things I would like to see in the world, in the beauty community, in my life, whatever. Yeah, just kind of make some rough notes and I figure I'm just gonna use these as prompts and we're gonna talk while I do some makeup really quickly for another video. <laughs> I've already done my brows eye primer and some skincare and I'm currently drinking a concoction I made <laughs> of a protein shake and some cold brew concentrate and I think I done done something. Ooh wee. <laughs> it's it's stout but it's good. Anyway for the palette today we're gonna use the uh, Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde because that's what I'm gonna be reviewing and I always want to do like a really pretty look with it and I'm gonna do that same technique again with the eyeliner I think because I like the way it came out in the video I did previously. So I'm just gonna do a small little wing here with my eyeliner. Start with like some work goals or whatever um, as far as like being productive and getting things done. I really want to be consistent and stay on a work schedule because I truly thrive on a routine and a schedule and staying busy just makes me very happy all around. <laughs> I don't know, I do really well when I'm on a structured schedule and I have a set time that I get up and I go start working and you know cut it off and give myself like real days off. I truly do some of the better content then and get the most done. It's just, I work the best that way. And I think this so far this year, we've not been off to a good start until this week. And this is the last week of January, but we had some technical difficulties and some hiccups in January. So we're, we're just gonna have a little reset in February. <laughs> and we'll say I'm just gonna early start now. Okay, I'm gonna take a really large fluffy brush. I'm gonna go into momentum. Yeah, that's what I I want to be very much more consistent and just have a organized work schedule. That way, when I do have free time, I have free time. It's not I'm putting something to the side that I need to be doing. And I'm going to crash, which is like the mauve taupe. Yeah, I'm not neglecting something to have free time. And I want to work at least a week ahead at a time. I wanna to try to get two weeks ahead. That would be like the ultimate goal or even a month ahead. And that way, if something comes up and I need to take time off, I can and I'm not gonna miss anything. And I'll, these are just kind of like a personal work goals that I wanna achieve. I want to get um, at least two videos of a week. If I don't have a vlog, that's okay. I'll just put up my regular content. And I want, but if there's a vlog, I wanna do three videos a week. And I do want to actually vlog more and wanna get at least one blog post up a week, like a review of a small item, say like a mascara or something, or just that may not work in a video format. And I just want to find a good balance with doing both of those and a balance with, you know, life. Which I think I'm kind of managing to do. I'm just trying to be more disciplined personally. I think that's the biggest thing is I want to be a more disciplined person. Because I don't have a whole lot of self-discipline, never have. Um, that's probably the only on Capricorn thing about me is that I lack that self-discipline. I'm kind of a chaotic mess a lot of times and I need to not be because I don't do well being that way. Another thing is I just I do want to vlog more. I really enjoy vlogging and I enjoy doing kind of like b-roll footage and I really want to get into more better at cinematography, better at like filming. <laughs> I really want to get more into photography and filming really nice looking clips and learning how to edit even better and just make something really pretty that's kind of chill and 
just nice to watch. Cause that's the kind of content I like. I like very good chill vlogs and I like pretty clips with, you know, going around doing something with no sound, just some music over it. You wanna take off balance? Move it deeper into the crease. I'm gonna take some uh, Utopia. It's almost like playing with watercolors today. Yeah, time management is something I'm definitely learning this year with having to share a computer with my husband. Time management's getting tested. <laughs> Instilled it very well, which is kind of a silver lining of it is that I am being forced to do, learn a skill that I've needed to know how to do and just haven't because I'm a giant child, <laughs> apparently. That looks really pretty blended together. This is a Crash, Off Balance, and Utopia. I'm gonna take a little bit of Karma and just pull it right out here. I'm just like painting right now. Just something I kinda enjoy to do with eyeshadows. Just mix colors and see what happens. Blend and play. Lifestyle wise, just be healthier, of course. Like I say every year, I want to uh, <laughs> take better care of my body. I want to get back to my healthy eating habits that I previously had that I kinda neglected last year. And I have no excuse not to, so. Yeah, we're gonna be doing eating a lot better and trying to feel better physically. I'm tired of hurting again <laughs> because of not taking care of myself and getting weight. Therefore, my scoliosis and my joints and everything get angry because I'm heavier and it's a lot of stress on my body. Even though I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm that big, but like if I gain five, 10 pounds, it's such a stress on my skeletal frame and my joints that it's, it makes a huge difference. And so I would like to uh, drop at least 30 pounds this year. I mean, I'm not saying, you know, you have to lose weight and all that kind of stuff. I'm saying for me physically to feel good physically. I don't mean this as in like aesthetically or to be attractive, any that kind of stuff. I purely mean it to feel good at living in my body, moving around, doing normal day-to-day -day tasks. Because if I'm heavier, it's a hell of a lot painful, more painful to do things. I have arthritis, I have scoliosis, all these things, added weight just is terrible on. Like, I'm tired of hurting. I want to be a little more active, which also helps my joints and stuff. Oh, by the way, I'm taking Vortex. You know, all these things I want to do together. I think I'm gonna start going back to the gym because that really did make me feel really good. I just, for when we do go on like vacations and stuff, I want to not be in pain the whole time, <laughs> you know? I want to be able to enjoy it and walk around and have fun and live like everyone else does. Like, here's something funny is that I see people walking, enjoying their life, doing day-to-day -day tasks, just getting groceries. And sometimes I feel such envy and anger and kind of, I guess a little bit of hate in there. Like not good feelings towards these people just because they can <laughs> do these things with no pain and it drives me crazy. Uh, beyond that, I just want to feel good physically, you know, and I also want to continue being sober and not drinking. That has been one of the best things I've ever done. Like, talk about feel so much better mentally and physically. <laughs> that made a huge impact on my mental state of just making me feel better. I was able to stick to schedules and be more productive and feel good about myself because I wasn't hungover and hating myself. Because that's what it was coming down to, just, you know, a lot of self-hate and... <sighs> And knowing I did it to myself too, like, you know, you did this, you made this choice to, you know, drink and here you are. So definitely want to keep that up. It gets, I can't say honestly that it gets like easier. Like there's still always gonna be a temptation, but I don't know, I just, I ignore it. Like that's one thing I do have great willpower about. You know, you can't just wake up one day and be perfect. It's always a, a journey and kind of a process to become your best self type of thing. Another thing, I want to take less depression naps. Like, <laughs> that was a big thing for me last year. We're just, eh, I'm kind of bored, just in grumpy and miserable feeling. I'm just gonna sleep through it and take a nap instead of doing something productive and doing something to take my mind off of it and not just sleeping through it. Like the only time I'm gonna justify a depression nap now is gonna be if it's that time of the month and it's a, you know, I'm a little anemic and tired, those kind of naps. I'm gonna have PMS naps and that's gonna be it. And I'm gonna try to stay on a freaking normal sleep schedule, but that was another thing depression naps were messing up. <laughs> not that they were that often anymore, but you know, there'd be bouts of them. Uh, this last month I had a few. 
That's what sucks today, or yesterday, start my period, of course. I'm like, son of a bitch, I just got back to being, doing stuff. I don't have time for period naps and feeling miserable. Luckily, it's not been too bad. Um, I'm like last month where I literally slept through the whole thing just about because it was so heavy it was caused me to be a little bit anemic and it takes you know a few days for your body to build back up its iron levels and all that and feel good again I'm sitting here just blending I'm not even like paying attention to what I'm blending I'm just talking you know I'm not really gonna cut the crease or anything because I'm gonna use a trick use our good old silicone sponge tip applicator so I'm gonna take the shade galaxy which is a light pinky champagne. I'm gonna take that on a little applicator, like so, and I'm gonna start this inner part, inner corner, and basically treat it like a cut crease. And just swipe across. See, this is the uh, best little tool for applying these Huda shadows. You don't have to worry about a glitter primer or anything like that. You just go on. I'm gonna take a Morphe M562 into Vortex. I've actually already used this shade on this brush, so it's just stained already. And I'm just gonna swing that kind of around here and kind of blend it into the shimmer. Speaking of just the beauty community alone, I uh, would like to see less consumerism, as in not so much like less we have people buying stuff. I want to see just smarter purchases all around. Um, I want to see the brands being more responsible and not pushing products constantly. I don't want to see launches like we did from ABH last year. That's just one after the other too much. I don't want to see any brand doing that. Like I even would be fine ColourPop step back a little bit because the cons it sucks on the consumer end. Like it's not fun to me. I don't get excited about anything anymore. I don't care <laughs> is what's happening. I'm getting jaded to new palettes and I'm just like, fucking who cares? It's all the same. That I really get excited about anything unless it looks really different or something, you know? And I think brands are hurting themselves by doing this. So, so I would just like to see more well thought out, innovative, innovative, cool color stories and palettes. Things are different, a little outside the box, you know, I just, I don't want to see the same old, same old. I think going in 2020, it's a new decade. It's time for some new business practices. I want to see less pushing of product. I want to see influencers and people just enjoying the product for what it is. Buying things because they want them, not because they feel like they have to have them. That's something I have always practiced and intend on continuing to practice is only buying product that I truly care about and am interested in and not just buying every little new thing. But I'd like to see more like shop my stash type videos and people just loving what they have already. And I also would like to see more eco-friendly packaging. Less plastics would be nice. And I wanna really, really, really wanna see more brands move into the direction of cruelty-free and vegan. I wanna see more clean makeup mainstream. I wanna see drugstore brands incorporating these clean beauty ingredients and less shitty ingredients in their products. And sure, the, pr the price may go up a couple dollars. I think I would be okay with that if I knew it was something very good, good quality. I like this for has, you know, the clean check mark. I'd like to see more affordable skincare besides just what, what do we have? Like the ordinary and good molecules. I'd like to see some really high-end good skincare that is accessible at the drugstore and easy to get your hands on. That's something I would really, really like to see. Of course, continued epic shade ranges is fantastic. I like seeing, finding shades that match me. I know that I'm uh, pretty pale a lot of times. Colors, foundations are either too yellow on me. If they're pale enough, they're too yellow. And otherwise they're just too dark or they're too pink. I need nice, good, neutral, leaning, cool, and by cool, I mean more of a blue undertone and not a pink undertone. I would love to see more foundations like that in the future. And I would love to see a huge, more spectrums across the board from all brands. And not just a handful of brands here and there at the drugstore doing it. I want to see every brand catering to everyone. And uh, yeah, speaking of the beauty community and kind of in general, just the YouTube community more. Uh, less drama and bullshit. <laughs> I really would like to see less nonsense. This isn't just the beauty community, obviously. This is just the YouTube community in general, I think is like this. They're just petty drama. I just, I don't care anymore. I don't want to see it. I'm tired of opening Twitter and seeing what Tina Mojo or Jack Paul did this. Like, I don't care about these people. Can we stop making 
bad people famous also would be nice. Let's stop making them famous and giving them attention. Let's vote with our views and watch people who have a positive impact and are good people. That's what I want to do. I, I just want to see just less petty bullshit and people being cancelled over nonsense. Like, I don't know, I'm just really sick of, like, cancel culture over everything. Because, you know, what happens is that it gets to where cancel culture means nothing when you cancel everything. It's like crying wolf. It's only effective if you do it where it counts. So, you know, maybe let's reel it in a little. You know, it's cool to know when people are shitty people. Like, I think there is a place for drama channels to an extent when they're not just gossip channels when they're well researched and they're telling you the facts of a situation, that's fantastic. But when they're just speculating and causing more trouble, maybe let's not watch those people that are giving into more fighting. We've got bigger things going on in the world to worry about than who's wearing what, you know, eyeshadow palette or who unfollowed who on Twitter or Instagram. Like really, <laughs> that that's, that's what we got to worry about. I just, I want people to learn a little more perspective, I guess, this year. I would just like to see a little more perspective in the coming decade. Material items aren't what really matters and that, I don't know, I feel like, it, I feel like a change is moving that way, away from consumerism and just everything having to be expensive and this and that to just a more simple caring society is what I would like to see. And I think there's a, a craving for that. And I don't mean like as in glam, like I love to be extra with my glam and stuff, but I don't know. I just want to see a little bit more of a conscient conscientious movement where we think about purchases a little more and think about the impact we have on society and does something really matter that much in the grand scheme of things. Maybe just look at stuff as a bigger picture is what I'm getting at. That's what, I guess, is where I'm getting, what I mean. Like, in the grand scheme of things, do some hairy lipsticks matter? No. I don't know if maybe that's just something that comes with age. Cause I mean, I'm 33, I guess. You get where you care a little less about small things and you quit giving a fuck, I guess, to an extent. You just kinda, you just wanna be happy <laughs> and little stuff Things don't feel like a, as big a deal as they did when you were younger. I wish that I didn't feel like everything was a lie. That's something I wish we could move away from. But I think that's something I've kind of come to realize in the last couple of years. That literally everything is a lie to an extent. I know that that sounds really a uh, dark and depressing thing to say, but once you kind of realize that, your eyes are opened a little bit and you kind of care a little less about stuff. Like, just... For example, this is an example that I think everybody can understand, is Facetune on Instagram. In, you know, these beautiful pictures on Instagram, these perfect lives. Literally none of that is real. To an extent, yeah, okay, sure, they're in this location or something, but it doesn't mean their life is perfect and they're happy. Like, that's, that's not how the world is. And especially just for Facetune, for example, no one's skin's perfect. No one looks, like, flawless. It's all photoshopped. It's all edited. Just go in thinking of it that way and you'll hate yourself a hell of a lot less and you won't compare yourself to other people so much if you know it's not real. And once you start, like, using editing programs and stuff, you can kind of pick it out pretty easily and tell who's photoshopping. Because, I mean, I'm totally guilty of, like, face tuning. Like, I, of course I do. I'll do it to correct lighting and, like, maybe I have, like, a patch of dry skin or something or mascara on my cheek that I'm, I'm gonna photoshop that out because I want the focus to be the makeup and the art I don't want somebody staring at a flake of skin on my face or a pimple right it's just you know my makeup picture is kind of a portfolio for like my makeup skill I'm not photoshopping the makeup though I'm just perfecting like things that might be distracting like a stray brow hair something like that but I'm not going in and you know hitting on a new face that is mm -mm. Nope, nope, nope. But so just take that though, that that concept of these staged Instagram pictures that look so perfect of everybody's like, you know, these flat lays where his products are just sitting so beautifully. People's products aren't sitting like that normally. They've made a little set and put that there. Like, <laughs> no, that shit goes on a shelf somewhere. I think very few people live their life in such an aesthetic way. You know who does? My sister-in-law, she really does. What you see on Facebook or from on Instagram from her is pretty real because <laughs> I know her. I'm like, 
how is she so damn perfect? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> take that concept though of people, you know, tweaking these images and creating this, this perfect life it looks like and apply that to other sectors. Apply that to the media and what they tell you and always take everything with a grain of salt. Do your more research. Don't just read one story if you're interested in something and yeah, always follow up on it. Always try to find alternative sources. Don't just believe the one source because everything is a lie to some extent. Everything is fudged. There's always a spin on something to make it benefit someone. You know, you're, it's hard to get just the hardcore facts on anything. So that, you know, just as long as you, I think, can kind of look at life that way. Even just like people in real life that you talk to that you know, and they'll be telling you a story about something, you know, they're gonna spin it to suit them. Just always you keep that in mind. And it makes life, life a lot less stressful, I feel like. At first, it's like a rude wake-up call that, oh my god, everything is a lie. Everything is marketing, basically. That's it. Everything is marketing. Everything is basically a commercial. Once you kind of accept that, you just don't care. <laughs> and I don't know, I think it makes things a little bit easier, even though it is kind of depressing at the same time. You know, I guess it makes you feel a little less impressionable, a little less gullible to not believe every little thing. I don't know. I'm rambling at this point, going off on a tangent that's probably not making any sense. I think that just may be one of those things about aging and, you know, being in your 30s. Your perspective on stuff changes and you get a little bit more realistic, maybe? <laughs> I think you do go through kind of a period of reflection and not necessarily like a midlife crisis or anything, but you do start to quit, you know, think about mortality. You think about your accomplishments and what you want to accomplish still, but you also feel really free. There's somehow just a pressure is lifted in your 30s. There's so yeah, plenty I want to accomplish still and I'm working on it. And I think as long as I'm working towards these goals, I feel good. And yeah, I may not end up with 100,000 subscribers on YouTube or something like that. This may not be my end all be all career, but I'm happy doing it and I enjoy it. It makes me feel good. And maybe one day, it will be. I don't know if any of that really made sense now that I'm thinking about it. It may not have. I was probably just kind of talking out of my ass a little bit. Or it may seem like I was. Sometimes I get I get to talking and I don't even know if it's where it's going sometimes. <laughs> I'm like, what am I talking about again? These are just words and then they lose their meaning. So the thing is, I'm somebody who thinks a lot and I'm a deep thinker, I guess you could say, but I'm not great at articulating these things in spoken word. I can write for days and it'll be eloquent and well written and my point gets across. Like, you know, I'm a good writer, I know that. And I think that's why I started YouTube though, because I wanted the challenge of speaking because it was never something I was good at. You know, I took speech classes as in like public speaking classes, taking opportunities, any opportunity I had to learn to overcome a stage fright, which I've never really had stage fright, but just I've always had trouble speaking and being concise and clear if I wasn't reading. So it's this uh, YouTube has really given me that kind of opportunity to, I don't know, like kind of find my voice in a way. And it's changed me quite a bit in this last year. See, I've been doing this for what? eight months. I'm way more assertive and confident now than I was a year ago. I don't know, it's definitely made that kind of a difference in me. And I don't, I guess I just got used to hearing myself speak, maybe. I don't know, it kind of made me like myself <laughs> in a way that I didn't previously, because I didn't know myself, I guess, beyond what's inside my head. I didn't know what the outside perspective was for me one else. And I think I like who I am. There are days I don't, of course, everybody has that. Uh, PMS makes you, it makes me hate myself anyway. I had that last night. I basically cried myself asleep last night because I was mad because a dress didn't fit me <laughs> the way I wanted it to. And just mentally fussing at myself for getting a few pounds. Like I can make any, you know, like crying about is gonna change anything. But that's what I did last night. Instead of going to sleep, I laid there and my brain just spun and found things to get mad about. And it was just like these intrusive, angry, hateful, cruel thoughts. 
And so I say like, uh, there's nothing anybody in the comments could say to me that I haven't said to myself <laughs> or said something a million times worse. That's what was happening last night. And I finally like started reading a book and just shut it down because sometimes that happens and you can't turn it off very easily. And it's annoying because it is intrusive. It is very much intrusive. And so it doesn't happen often. It's mostly, that was purely PMS last night. Like I know exactly what that was because it's, I know what time of month it is. So it was uh, time to hate myself. <laughs> Have my little pity party, I guess. Bip, 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 bip. Just bip it on. You know what I would really like to do in this coming next couple of years? Have a merch line. <laughs> I have so many funny like t-shirt ideas I'd like to do. I would like to just really be able to go full on into this and create really cool things. Okay, I think dyes are done. I'm dead messing with them anyway. I'm gonna go ahead and maybe touch up some aligner, put on some lashes, do my skin and all that. I think I've rambled enough <laughs> and we'll be right back. Okay, for lips, I'm gonna go with kind of a, a grayish tone. This is Brooklyn Thorn from NYX Liquid Suede. And over top of that, I'm going to put a little bit of this gloss from Wet n Wild called Bud Romance. This is like a kind of a lavender mauve tone and yeah this is a liquid cat suit from the rose collection you gotta mention how much i love these wet n wild glosses they're so good okay yeah i like that this is the look finished i'm gonna go ahead and judge my hair and put some earrings on and went back to finish up the video okay and this is the finished look for today now i'm gonna be wearing in my next video i'm about to film bella Sagante. i probably do I feel like I always do. like it gets like between my teeth. Is that happening to anybody else? That, that was so weird and annoying. It's a my <laughs> root cover up spray on my fingers. And then I also use my colored conditioner. So my hands are stained again. It's like my hands are getting permanently stained because yeah, I use pigmented uh I use colored depositing products in my hair all the time. So my hands are just perpetually stained brown and it looks like I have a weird fake tan going on. Good job. Anyways. <laughs> This is the finished look and yeah, this video probably got real rambly. It may not make a whole lot of sense. No telling where I'm gonna edit out and where I'm gonna leave in. I don't know at this point. And anyway, have you enjoyed hanging out with me and uh, talking about what we wanna see in the new decade, in the new year, in 2020, whatever, our goals? Give me a like and subscribe and comment down below some things that you would like to see in the new decade. It could be personal goals, things you wanna see in the beauty community, just in the world in general, politics, whatever. Let me know in the comments down below and let's chit chat about it. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Stay spooky. Bye now. Bye.